What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Dream a Little, the podcast that's all about helping you feel confident about your kink. I'm your host, Lo. Thank you so much for listening. I'm so excited to have our guest, Kay, on the show because she's a real life example that you actually can get a girlfriend on board with ABDL. She used to have a hard limit for diapers and age play, but today she's going to explain how she changed her mind about it and actually grew to love it just as much as her boyfriend. Don't forget to check out the show notes of this episode at thelittlelounge.com slash 143. That's where you'll find a preview of my latest Nurturing Mommy roleplay and a link to get access to over 20 episodes plus a new one every Monday for just $5 a month. And just so you know, I make two versions of every role play, one for boys and one for girls. So everyone's included. Again, the link to all this is thelittlelounge.com slash 143. Quick shout out to Brian, our newest member, along with everyone else who signed up. We just hit 500 members, which is super exciting. Thank you so much, guys. All right, I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Let's get started. What's up, Kay? Welcome to the show. Hey, hello. It's good to be here. Good to have you. All right, so can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you identify as within the ABDL community? Uh, well... I have only identified as a part of the ABDL community since about July. Uh, I'm in my, (laughs) I'm super fresh, mid thirties, almost not quite mid anymore, but I'm still there and I'm a mommy. I love it. So are you like an actual mommy in real (laughs) life too, or just like an ABDL mommy? Uh, I'm both. Oh, I'm both. great. Okay, awesome. So how did you get into, how did you find out about ABDL in the first place? Uh, I mean, so <laughs> my life has gone interesting places in the last year. So I was married for a really, really long time. Like I got married really young and that ended in April. And I maybe got a little crazy, <laughs> just, a, just a touch crazy and like joined some BDSM local groups. Okay. Um, Yeah. So I became kind of a dumb for the first time in my life. Okay. So have you Uh, always had these desires or was this kind of just like a new, you know what? I want to try something new. No, it was always within me that I was just kind of a dominant personality and I always wanted to try, I don't know, crazy stuff. And uh, my partner was never really into it. And so when I had freedom... I was free and I did all the free things that I wanted to do. That's amazing. Okay. So how did you find out about these community? Like, did you go to events or something or was it more in the online space? um, Well, I both, I went to a local munch and I was vetted for a club. It's kind of a nice club. I went there a few times. I met some people. One of the people I met interestingly enough, was a little, which I didn't know a lot about, except for to find these clubs, you have to go on FetLife, of course. And while I was on FetLife, I got, like every female dom of a certain age gets, so many gross messages. Oh, I'm sure. (laughs) uh, (laughs) It's disgusting, uh, to be honest with you, because I mean, yes, I I do want to do horrible things to you, but not the first time I've ever spoken to you. Perhaps maybe go with, hi, how are you? (laughs) Keep Uh, it simple. I had a guy who was like, hey, will you uh, humiliate me for being a disgusting white boy loser who likes to sniff panties? And I was like, "Mm, nah, I'm good. (laughs) But thanks for asking. And it was worse than that, actually. He was super detailed about all the things he wanted me to do. Another guy... Uh, He was older than me. He was probably 50 something. And he wanted me, he wanted to pay me, actually. I did never, I never did paid dom work, but he wanted to pay me to take him to Costco while he wore a diaper. And he wanted me to pat his bottom at Costco and tell him he was a good boy. I love how he was very specific about the store. (laughs) Costco, yes. (laughs) Not Sam's Club. Costco. Costco. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, he was very specific and it was really creepy because again, first interaction, that's gross. Don't don't do that. No, no never to listeners, do that. don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. It's just it's, it's rude. It's just rude. If you were, you know, meeting someone for a first date, you'd be like, hey. Anyway. So <laughs> uh on 
that like? I got a message from this boy and the name, his fat life name made me really giggle a lot. Mm-hmm. It was Dipey Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so diaper lover and big nerd, which was verified when I finally talked to him, but he was actually very polite and, you know, was just interested in a conversation and I was not into diapers and I was not into baby stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I have a kind of a complicated history with my childhood. And so that kind of like is a red flag somewhat for me or it was. And I was like, you know, I really, you're a nice guy. Is there something else you're into that we could talk about? Cause <laughs> I'm not really into this whole thing. So he's into a little bit of humiliation stuff, a little bit of feminization. And I'm down with that. I can do that. So we did and we, talked some more and over a little a few weeks I guess I realized I was being kind of a jerk like I will try anything once probably twice (laughs) just to make sure I really did you know yeah Uh, and I I liked him and I was like you know why am I being such a like a kink shamer I don't really I don't know what it is about me that I'm just so resistant to this so I was like you know what let's talk about this diaper thing What's, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> and so we did. And it, I don't know. It progressed from there. And I didn't hate it at all. <laughs> Actually, it kind of is perfect for my style of dumb, to be honest. Uh, because I get to be in control. I get to be in charge. I get to be bossy and, you know, the things I like. But I also get to be nurturing and like care for him yes i love that about it too yeah you wouldn't think that they would go hand in hand but in this dynamic they really do and that's i don't know to me there's nothing sexier than that right i agree and for me like my i think my biggest kink in general is knowledge and vulnerability like if i can get someone to tell me their deepest darkest secrets I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, that's doing it for me. What's yes, up? love it. Because I'm, I'm kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know. Like, just do you have something really freaky? Because tell me, I'm gonna want to know it. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. I love vulnerability. Probably is my king too. And I mean, I can't think of anything more vulnerable than like a grown man putting on a diaper, <laughs> being in front of you. Like, agree. It's agree. very vulnerable. <laughs> Yes. Yes, it is. And how they turn all like shy and cute. Like, I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> uh, no. And he's all beardy and tatted. And, you know, he's a man. The dichotomy. And then all of a sudden he's a baby. <laughs> I love it. I, I love, love it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you. Need- and he's sitting on the couch. Sorry. <laughs> sitting on the couch. Listen. So now you've been in person. Smile. <laughs> So how did that come about? So were you were you looking for people in your area? Kind of. I mean, I was just looking to have fun. I didn't really know what I wanted. Like I'd been in a really long relationship. It had only been, you know, three, four months. I wasn't really looking for anything specific. Just meeting people, having a good time, exploring, whatever. So the first time we met, we lived kind of not super close, just a little over an hour away. So I came to his house and... Our first date was us going shopping. Wait, hold Did you on. Go to I Costco? have to find verification. <laughs> we didn't go to Costco. We went to Kohl's. And he was wearing a diaper. And we went shopping for bras. Not for me. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. So he was, you know, trying them on in the dressing room and looking completely adorably nervous. And it was cute. And I liked it a lot. That was your first date? Yeah, that was our first date. Story for the grandkids right there. (laughs) Like, we were looking for, like, a date date. Like, I was still in dom mode at this point. Like, I was still, I don't know, not emotionally attached. Yeah. You're, like, ready to have fun. (laughs) Right. That's exactly what I was looking for. Like, we started seeing each other fairly regularly. Oh, weekly. It got more and more ABDL-ish. As time went on, uh, it turns out I was really bad at putting diapers on, like <laughs> very specific about the way he likes them to fit. 
Mm-hmm. And there's like a process you have to go through. You do the top tapes first, and then you have to tuck in this inside between the legs. You have to make sure it's just so, and then the legs have to be tight. And I was not good at it at all. Like, not even a little. <laughs> <laughs> How are you That's now? very awkward. <laughs> I'm better, I think. I think I'm better every now and again. I miss, but, you know, <laughs> I think I'm better now. Oh, he'll let you know, it sounds like. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But he doesn't complain too much if he knows what's good for him. By the way, I was curious. Do you remember what his first message to you was? I actually have it on Fet Life. Still, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was very, like, hi, how are you doing very like I would like to get to know you kind of ki- like a kind normal human message like just as if you be- met in person right right yeah just so it was normal that I think that's the only reason I responded to him because I probably had 50 messages in my inbox that were just <laughs> fucking filthy. that's what they were they were filthy and like even as someone who is very open and accepting to kink and alternative lifestyle I was still like, you know what? I'm not like your jerk off generator and I'm not just going to write you dirty stories because that's, oh, I'm an erotica writer also just throwing that out there. So that's what a lot of people wanted from me was like, Hey, this is my kink. Tell me what you do. Like, you know what? You can pay for that. (laughs) Thank you very much. I'll write you a 5,000 word story. That'll only cost you a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Sure. You know, Um, people can be so rude. To complete strangers, too, who they've never, ever met. Yeah. So being it's polite pretty, yeah. st- makes people stand out. And it seems like, oh, yeah. you know, you should have to do something crazy. But if you just keep it simple, it's usually going to work out better for you. <laughs> it is. And if you treat someone like a human being and not like like some sex machine or a... <laughs> just because I say on my profile that I am usually a dom doesn't mean that that's all I am. That's right. just what you have to see in that life. I mean, you know, I'm also a person. Yeah, most of us are. <laughs> right? I don't, it's 24-7, like, you know, latex and leather and just you show up at my house and I spank you and then you leave. It's yeah. not, not what we do. So anyway. <laughs> You're like, so I have anyway, a family I, um, and friends and regular people right. that know me. <laughs> yeah. 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 So by like September... We kind of decided that we were like dating, dating, like boyfriend, girlfriend. It kind of snuck up on me anyway. I think he texted me one day and he's like, hey, so are we dating? I was like, "Um, yeah, yeah, I think think we are. Yeah, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) I guess we are. You're like, I've been diapering you for a few solid months now. Like, might as well just make it official. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Okay. So that was good. Um, and so then we planned a trip. So that was fun. So that's when we started planning our, our trip. Okay. So this was your first trip. trip together. And was it, it was uh-huh. kink related, right? You did like a mommy dom little boy trip. Yes. Well, we just decided, we decided, we found a cool concert we wanted to go to. It was about four hours away from where we live. And it was in a city that had like, you know, some other interesting things that we liked. And so we just decided that for two days, we would do full time baby. Love it. Biggest fantasy right there, honestly. I cannot wait to do something like that. Okay, so tell me everything. <laughs> so we drove four hours. Well, that morning we woke up. I spent the night. I diapered him and got him dressed all cute. We so we had gone shopping for specific little clothes that were like still socially acceptable for a boy, which is so much harder than it is for a girl. Mm-hmm. I don't mean, yeah. No, I mean, that's really hard. So it's like some joggers that are kind of bigger ish. So you can't really see the diaper and just like, you know, a hoodie with some superheroes on it. Maybe a rugrat shirt here, there. I don't know. Some Something low key little. Right. Yeah. Some low key little for boy, which is again, harder than you think. But so we dressed him up in his little joggers and this little, this little t-shirt and we took off and then we just did like, we checked into our hotel Go out and um, had some pizza, did just whatever. And just me reminding him in public that he was in a diaper, that he's little, that he was cute. And you know, all the all the good mommy things that I like to do. Hot. Oh, uh, let's do a diaper <laughs> check. <laughs> right, right. That was really fun. We went to the zoo. Oh. Um, 
Yeah, where we actually ran into accidentally. We knew they were in like in town, but he has a couple of little friends here in town that we ran into at the zoo. Oh, cute, you know. And then we went swimming at the pool in the hotel, and he had bought little swimmers. <laughs> so, cute. and they were so cute. They were like, I don't know. They look like ruffly panties, like because they're real stretchy, like super stretchy. They were about the most adorable thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh my uh, god, so I love it. Me. I know it's so fun. And then we went to the concert where I dressed him in little uh, overalls and a onesie, and I painted his nails. <laughs> How cute! I know. <laughs> It was fantastic. It was fantastic. I loved it. And so we danced and had a great time at the concert. And then the next day we drove home. That's, and that was our little adventure. That's amazing. That's goals right there. So when you're out and about, like, how do you deal with like changes and stuff? Um, he's super paranoid about that. So we had to make sure that uh, like, first of all, we got really good ones. Yeah. The space, I think, that we took with us. Which ones? The space ones. Oh, a oh, they're, those are thick. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're super thick, which is really funny under his jeans, but whatever. <laughs> he just looks like he's extra blessed, I'm sure. I'm sure that's what people think. <laughs> so we did that. And we made sure that we, like, made it back to the hotel for change. Okay. I made him take a nap day, so, you know. Well, I got ready for the concert. I made him lay down and take a nap. Very cute. Which she wasn't a fan of, but oh well. Yeah, my little does Maybe. not like that either. <laughs> you don't get to decide. That's the point. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I wanted to backtrack just a little bit because I remember you saying that, you know, originally when you brought up like diapers and stuff, you felt this like resistance. So I was just curious, did you ever get to the bottom of that? Was it more of like what the diaper symbolized that kind of made you feel kind of iffy about it or was it like more of like the sanitary issue? No, it's not the sanitary issue. It was more. So I had some a pretty rough childhood with like abuse. And so anything that even remotely reminded me of that Your childhood. Um, was hard to deal with. Like I don't ever want to be an abuser. Like I don't ever want to be someone that that could even be thought of. And so the fact that it's reminiscent of childhood, you know, I mean, it's the diaper. Yeah. I had to like really think through like, no, this isn't like, this isn't a child. This is a fully grown man. Mm -hmm. it, it's not anything to do with actual children. I had to like, I really had to talk myself through it though, because it was, I don't know. It's a hard leap. Oh, yeah. For me, or it was. For a lot of people, it is. Um, I can see that. Yeah. And I guess it just all came down to the fact that I really liked him. And if this is something that is important to him, I have to try and understand it. Right. And for people who have partners that are completely unwilling to even, I don't know, even go there at all, I feel really bad for them. Because... I guess if you try it and you hate it, that's one thing. But if you just stick to your guns, like, no, this is just wrong. Yeah. You know, like all of those commenters on the internet that mm -hmm. say horrible, horrible, horrible. I don't know. I just feel like you should respect your partner and, I don't know, give it a shot at least. The worst I, thing that happens is you don't like it. I'm with you 100% on that. I mean... Not everyone's as lucky to have a partner as accepting as you are. <laughs> it sounds like you did a whole 180 right. on that. It was like you went from like, absolutely not. And then you actually ended up loving it, which I, that's why I really enjoyed hearing your story. Because I feel like a lot of people out there don't think that's possible. But you're proof that it is. Right. I mean, you were kinky to begin yeah. with, of course, but still. Yeah. Yeah, but it was still a leap. I mean, it was still very different. But it, it's just, it's not what you see on tv all these stupid uh, youtube videos of my strange addiction and the they just make it into something so much weirder than it really is it, yeah they do they really it, really do 
it's it, that's hard to watch for me. I'm like, that's not real. No, don't do that. It's so cringy <laughs> and trying to overcome it, that social stigma is like the biggest challenge for most ABDLs, I feel like. Right, right. Especially being an ABDL boy, I think it's probably because girls are like, oh, everything, you know, call me daddy is just a thing mm-hmm. and short skirts are a thing. But for a boy who wants to do that, I feel like it's even less socially acceptable and probably even harder to find someone who's going to be okay with it. Yeah, definitely. That's sad. Little boys are really cute. I know. Um, I mean, my little boy kills me all the time. He's so adorable. (laughs) I love it. And I love that you two found each other. That's awesome. So uh, one last question before we run out of time here, but I was just wondering, now that you guys have been kind of together for a while, how often do you guys find the time to role play together? And do you still make time for vanilla time? So we text like all the time, like every day, all day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then... So I'm here because it's Thursday and that's my day. So Thursday is the day that I come down and that we do whatever we do. Sometimes it's vanilla. Sometimes it's super kinky. Sometimes it's a mix of both. Um, And then we usually try to get together weekend just because, you know, it's hard being far away. But yeah, we definitely still do almost every single time I'm with him. He's in a diaper at some point. Cute. Like probably when I hang up Probably when I hang up the phone, I'm going to go dress him. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. I love hearing stories like that. So, Kay, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing. I really enjoyed getting to know you, and I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you, Lo. It's good to talk to you. 